Hallelujah. Let's pray this prayer together. For somebody here, it may be your first time. For somebody here, it may be a reconnection back to God. Let all of us do it. The Bible says, if your sin is as scarlet, when God gets involved, it will be as white as snow. So if it's as crimson, it will be like wool. There is no sin that God cannot purge. Some of us in this place, we are deceptive. We are liars. Some practice iniquity. But God is saying that he's able to forgive. I want all of us to repeat after me this prayer. Lord Jesus, I want everybody to say together, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you came and died for me. I confess with my mouth that you were raised from the dead to justify me. I receive forgiveness. I receive a cleansing in my soul, in my body. I receive strength and grace to live right for the future, now and forevermore. I receive grace and strength to live right for the future, now and forevermore, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King. Now and forevermore, I abide in the kingdom of God. Now and forevermore, in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands in the of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we sit down here, do we have anyone here coming for the very first time? Can I just welcome you? Just wave your hand to me. This is your first time. Thank you very much. 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 Can you just shake your hands? We are going to welcome you properly at the end of the service. Hallelujah. You may be seated, please. Thank you very much. Uh, can you put your hands together for my choir? This is the best in the world. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I think I'm going to apply. My wife and I will join the choir. Uh, if they would grant our application. I hope they do. If they don't grant our application, we deserve it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much for taking us to God's presence. Can we put our hands together for Jesus for what they have done? And when I was hearing some bass strings, I know my son was there around. It's just unique. Can you put your hands together now for the... <laughs> Don't worry, it was, uh, it was wonderful. I know a peculiar sound. I said, ah, what's happening? Oh, he's the one there. Thank you very much. And our lead guitar, you guys, you are coming up so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can you. Can you feel it? You can feel it, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes I wish we don't have time. I just bless God in heaven... Although I'm not in a hurry to go there, but in heaven we do nothing but worship. Praise God. I do not but worship. Good morning this morning. Can I tell your neighbor good morning? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. You are welcome. God bless you, really good. Hallelujah. Thank God for your life. Thank God for all of you. I want to ask those who have gone through apostolic training school or those who want to be a part, uh, begin to serve in God's house. You can talk to any of the pastors. Until you are serving, you have not given your body to God as a living sacrifice. There are many departments you can serve in. The ones you see here are the ones visible. The ushering, the protocol, the music. There are many other departments. Uh, this church is going somewhere, and we want us to go together. Amen? Amen. I say, I want us to go together. Amen? Amen? There are so many aspects. The brother I gave testimony two or three weeks ago, he wanted to do something. He just swept the church. He just swept the church by himself. Nobody told him to do so. He just swept the church, and what he got was a miracle, a testimony of a job. Are you with me? And while he gave the testimony, somebody had and sent 200000 or 250, I don't know, into his account. What I'm trying to let you know, when this kind of thing happens, is because God is encouraging someone that don't just sit down and say, well, nobody has asked me to do anything. Can you tell your neighbor, it's your father's house? Tell your neighbor, it's your father's house. It's your father's house. Nobody asks you to take care of your father's house. I don't own this church. I don't own this place. I'm just privileged to be co-founded of this place. Amen. Amen. So it's your father's house, whatever you can do. Some of you are gifted in technology. Some of you are gifted in drama. Some of you are gifted in films. Some of you are gifted in different departments. Some of you are gifted in arts. Some of you are gifted in painting. That's what you can use for God. Some of you are good in digital marketing. Some of you are good in different aspects. None of you is without a gift of God. Please, 
don't just come from Sunday to Sunday and not use that gift. Our children have just gone to the children's church right now. So if you are gifted in teaching children, so if you are gifted in different areas, of course for the children's church, I'm sure you understand, we'll have to screen you because of what happens in society. Uh, those who take care of our children, we want to be sure that they actually are ready for that. Amen? Amen. But please, I will ask you, do something in the house of God. Can you tell your neighbor, do something, do something, do something in the house of God? Help me tell your neighbor, do something in the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, on behalf of Pastor, my wife, we want to thank all of you that celebrated with us last week at the Thanksgiving of our son's wedding. And we know that your own day of joy will come in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord, as we go into your word, we ask that you give us clarity, give us understanding. We ask, Lord, that this message will be a benefit, confound us an advantage, both the person preaching and the people receiving, and all those who will be a part online. We welcome our online audience. We ask in Jesus' name that the world will benefit them and benefit all of us now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I forgot to mention these two announcements. The HODs and the church management group, please, we are having a 15 minutes meeting. 15 minutes at the end of the service. It will be more than 15 minutes. I want to come. Number two, I have a ministry that is a little bit different from what you know of, or many of you know, uh, reaching out to the business community and to the political community. Uh, I used to do what they call maximum success conferences on campuses and universities, but by divine instruction, we rested it for a while. So we are starting all over again uh, this aspect of my life, that ministry, that we have rested. We are going to use uh, the 1st of April, a Wednesday, to do a re-establishment in this place. And I'm particularly interested in anyone who is in the business. Uh, since I left university about 36 years ago, I never worked for any man as a staff. And within two years, three years of my starting in business after university, I was so rich, I didn't know what to do with money. That's the truth at that time. Now I know what to do with money, praise God. At that time, I didn't know. Our first car was a Mercedes Benz at that time, uh, bought with our cash. And it was the grace of God, not because I was smart. And God had been impressed upon my heart. It doesn't matter what level you are, you can be at a higher level. You can fulfill destiny. Are you with me this morning? Are you still with me this morning? So I want to know, April 1st is a Wednesday. We're going to have the meeting. It's a public holiday. We're going to have the meeting from April 1st. May 1st. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for your following. <laughs> I was going to argue with you. It's April 1st. <laughs> May 1st is a Wednesday. So please, I'd like you to prepare our heart. And if you are planning to go into business, or you are say, doing what they call hustling, you are not a hustler. Don't use such word for yourself. I'm begging you, don't use such word for yourself. The words are powerful. You are not a hustler. Okay? So we're going to see on that first of May. You want to tell your friends. You want to prepare for it. It's not going to be too long. Uh, uh, you are, I will give you details later, but I just must mention that so that you will not confuse it with the announcements later. Mark your calendar. Mark your diary. Every one of you that doesn't have at least four streams of income, and that four stream of income is from the book of Genesis. Anyone who doesn't have it, you must be at that meeting. Come with your notepad, come with your pen. The Almighty God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those of you who are in business, to scale your business, to increase it, to expand it. In fact, the topic God gave me, how to be strategic positioning of your business. So we're going to touch those who are not in business yet, those who are in business, and those who want to increase it in the session we have. Amen? Amen. The Almighty God will bless all of us in Jesus' name. We've been dealing with the topic of faith. And uh, we have mentioned and we have thought around faith. 
And many people don't know that the currency of operation in the kingdom of God is faith. What do I mean by currency? What you use to exchange for goods and services is called currency. And what is legal tender in Nigeria is not legal tender. Hallelujah. In another country, the federal government have prohibited the elimination of your goods in dollars because dollars seem to be a strong currency and people were using it. The reason basically is a currency has a boundary of operation. In the kingdom of God, the currency in the kingdom is faith. What you release to receive. What you put forth that something can come back to you. Now, if you don't have that currency, you will stumble throughout your Christian life. You will make mistakes, you will do things wrong, and you will wonder why others are having and you don't have. And you may assume that it's because my father was poor, my mother was poor, I didn't go to school. That has nothing to do with the currency of faith. So what to make the currency work is what I want to start teaching this morning. I call it the culture of faith. The culture of faith in the kingdom. You can call it the spirit of faith, but the culture of faith. But listen to me. Uh, there is one uh, seminar series called TED Talks. I'm sure you heard TED before. TED is uh, technology, entertainment, and design. They have TED Talks where someone who is accomplished in a field, short message about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, they'll come and speak. In the year 2009, this is our beautiful sister, Chinma Amanda Adichie, gave a talk, TED Talk in New York. And she gave a statement that reverberated throughout the whole world, called it the danger of a single story. The danger of a single story. What that means is hearing just one portion of a story and running away with it. And it will disrupt many things, it will affect many things, it will affect how you see things. Well, the danger of a single story also afflicts believers. Are you with me? That many believers, they don't take enough time to understand what they believe. So they struggle and they struggle and they struggle. Can you give me Psalm 62, please, verse 11? They struggle and they struggle and they wonder why we keep struggling. Psalm 62, sir, verse 11. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongs unto God. Listen, God has spoken once. God doesn't have to repeat it again and again. So when God spoke once, I heard it twice. How did he hear it twice? We're going to deal with the culture of faith this morning because if you don't hear it again, what God said once, you will never experience the power. You will not explain the power. The details that God wants to unfold for you, you may not get. Tell your neighbor the culture of faith. Culture of faith. The culture of faith. The culture is the lifestyle, the modus operandi of a community. What they believe, what they do. If you come to my village, for example, you are looking for pandayam in the morning, you will not get. Because it's not the culture of my village. But if you come to my village, you're looking for a buy in the morning. Most likely, they offer you different varieties. Because the culture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What, they, they say, what is your How they act, how they operate, what they do in that place. The same way a family can have a culture. In some families, by 7 p.m., everybody goes to bed. In some families, 7 p.m., they've just started. It's the culture. How you do in a household may not be what is acceptable in other household. So cultures are different. But in the kingdom of God, God expects you to operate at that level where every word he says that has power, you will expend the power. Can you raise your hand to the Almighty God this morning and declare, I will expend the power of God in my life. I will expend the power of God in the word. Every word of God that has been spoken to me will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. I will give you one example quickly before we go further. Moses was herding his father-in-law's sheep. 
at the backside of the desert. And he saw the bush burning and was not consumed. Okay? Uh, God will speak to you in different forms. He will speak to you through your job, through your husband, your wife, your friends, circumstances. God is not limited through preaching of the Bible alone. The Bible declared that the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the firmament trail forth his handy work day unto day, uttered speech and natural knowledge. So God speaks in different forms. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Moses, the bush was born in, I said he looked at the bush, it was on fire, but was not consumed. And he turned aside to look at this great sight. That is where many people make mistakes. They exit chapter 3. They make mistakes because he turned aside, they assume that the bush was behind his back. That he turned back. No, the Bible says he was looking at it. But the Bible says, and the Bible gave us the clue. When God saw that he turned to see what was happening, God spoke to him. It's in front of you. Turning aside means you are taking more interest to hear the second time, to look at the details of what it's all about. Every single one of us, particularly in Africa, God does not determine that we should be beggars forever. God has not determined that we should be beggars, japping to wherever, going to wash corpses and wash floors and wash whatever debt and send pictures back home that were in U.S. or U.K. There's nothing wrong being U.S. and U.K., but you will not go as a refugee. Oh, I said you will not go as a refugee. You will not go as an outcast in Jesus' name. When you go there, you'll be hailed, you'll be welcomed with red carpet in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's what I believe. It is the word of God that carries that. It is not superstition. Moses turned aside, and when Moses turned aside, then God spoke to him. There are two great withouts in the Bible. Two great without. The first one in Hebrews eleven six: without faith, no man can please the Lord. The second without is Hebrews twelve fourteen: without holiness, no man can see God. Faith is what you do, how you do it, the premises by which you do them. Holiness is the picture of God on your heart, who you are. The Bible says we walk by faith. How we do things in the kingdom, how we act in the kingdom is by faith. If it's not by faith, it does not please God. So the culture of the kingdom is we walk by faith and not by sight. I'll give you a very small example that could help us. If you enter a cab, you enter an Uber, and the Uber driver comes and park, can you answer this question? You have been driving for 40 years. The Uber driver is a 20-year-old. Will you ask him to give you the car key? Say, so move, move, move. <laughs> I don't have faith <laughs> that you can drive. Let me take over this. Is it going to happen? The culture is where you book an Uber or a boat when he shows up. You exercise your faith that boat or Uber had done their homework well by going into that car and sitting down. Despite the fact that you may be older than him, you may be more experienced than him, that is the culture where you operate that way. I want to ask you a question. When pastor was teaching us this morning a few aspect I was able to get that. Can you put your hands together for our dear mama this morning? Put your hands. Ain't she looking beautiful? You are not clapping so well. I'm angry with somebody. And she was telling us about faith. He said when he asks you to give an offering, when you are asked to bless your man of God, if you don't really understand, you'll be struggling within your heart. You'll be asking why. So you must gain understanding. The truth of the matter is the culture of the kingdom of God is that as God blesses you, outside of your tithe and your offering, communicate, communicate means let them know that something has happened to you. Let your pastors know. That's the culture. And it is not, nobody put an amount on it, it's just to be from your heart. Because there is a culture, there is a way God expects the kingdom to run. Are you still with me this morning? Second Corinthians 4, Verse 13. 2 Corinthians 4 by, by verse 13. There's a culture in this church I want the ushers to help me enforce. No movement when I'm preaching. 
Ushers, please. When people are standing up, let me beckon on them to sit down. They distract other people. You will not die in 45 minutes. If you can hold on. Amen. Praise God. We, having the same spirit of faith, can you see there? It's called the spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. The emphasis this morning I wanted to bring up for you is the spirit of faith, the culture. There are expectations that God has for all of us. It's the spirit of faith. That's the culture. If we don't walk by faith, we are ruined. We're in trouble. And let me tell you something. I will repeat myself for clarity's sake. Every one of you have faith. The only problem is many people have natural faith, not spiritual faith. Okay? Faith is full assurance and confidence that what you trust in will deliver. When you sat on that chair, you had faith that the chair will carry you. That what you trust in will deliver. When you enter your car and you drive it off, you have faith that your car will drive. Is that not so? The Bible says the kingdom of God, we must have that spirit of faith. In the book of Mark 11, Jesus Christ, verse 22, Jesus Christ told them, have faith in God. People have faith in themselves. Some have faith in their beauty. So have faith in their cleverness. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. So I hope you are getting the, what I'm giving by the spirit of faith. So when we have that understanding of that, it's an operation. It's not something you learn so that you can be bold to say you have faith. It's something that happens to you. When that thing happens to you, it begins to affect every other thing you do. It affects the way you deal with your husband and your wife. For those of you who are single, it affects how you relate with who you may marry or how you even like someone you don't like someone. Some of you, you fall in love. It's amazing how you fall in love with some yam heads. How do you get it? What happens? How did your path cross? Because some things are not in place. It's a spirit of faith. You will attract exactly who you are. But there is no cross border. It's some of those things that will reveal who you are. So let me give you an example because of time of faith, the culture of faith. Let me give you an example because if I'm to go through it all, 10 hours will not be done. I only give you one example and how to achieve it and I will be done. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5 to 13. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5 to 13. I said Matthew, not Mark. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, mm, wait a minute, what happened? Hallelujah. Put it on. There came unto him a centurion. Now, I want you to listen to me. When the Bible uses words, the Bible uses words to give us content and context. When he mentioned a centurion, he wanted to know that that was a big man. That was a, that was a big guy there. That's a head hog. He had soldiers under him. Centurion sent his hundred. He had at least a hundred soldiers under him. You have had centenary before. Are you still with me this morning? Yes, if you are here, let me see your hands up. I want to be sure I'm talking to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when the Bible says that, you want to know he's an important person, someone who had stature, and he came to him, beseeking him, what was he asking for? Verse 6. And saying, Lord, my servant light at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. So this centurion, he had a hundred soldiers at least under him, but he was very concerned about his servant. Not only concerned by his servant, he came publicly. All the epaulets, all the gold, all the whatever, he was not important. He came before Jesus Christ. 
Now, I want to remember talking about the spirit of faith. The Bible says that without love, faith can't work. But faith, 1 John chapter 4, I believe, verse 8, he said, in Christ Jesus, circumcision avails nothing of circumcision, but fail which works by love. I heard that first one now, Galatians, either of the two. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So he was concerned for his servant. Why am I saying this? Many people will never have their faith operate because they are not loving. They are not full of love. I must just drop that across along the path. That's not my topic. If you are full of hatred and selfishness and wickedness and blatant arrogance, that is not the culture of the kingdom. It will be very unlikely your faith will work. One of the reasons, and I believe, believe me, and this is true, why the church has not been able to make a lot of impact in Nigeria. We are in church, we go for meetings, but many people are queer. They don't have love. And love is not what you receive. Love is what you give. Love is not what you receive. That you receive love doesn't mean there's a love in the church. You measure the love in the church by how much of it that you are giving. Not how much of it that you are receiving. So give us a tormented, verse 7. Let's read for that, please. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that that should come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Our mama here, her mother was a late senior military officer. And, of course, I know a lot about the military before I met my wife, but she confirmed it. They have Batman, they have all those soldiers that they work with, and blah, blah, blah. There is a way they work. Military is highly regimented. When your boss, the only time you will not salute your boss is if you are not wearing a cap. And even then, you will be at attention. How many of you are old enough to hear zombie, oh, zombie, zombie? Oh, zombie. So we know they work. I say you tell them to work. You know, they are like that. They obey instructions. Are you still with me this morning? That's the culture in the army. One of the most moving things I ever saw, Pastor, was a young boy, as a little boy, he had desired to be in the military because his father was in the military. Okay? And my wife told me something, which is true. He said, children of junior military officers they end up making it to become senior officers, generals, because their target will be their father's bosses. Okay? The father was just a lance corporal when he was a little boy. So the boy, of course, went to the officer rank and became a commissioned officer, a lieutenant. The father was a sergeant now. And then when he was commissioned, and then he had to go and salute. So he marched before his father. Oh, it's a beautiful scene. And the father... He was about to salute his son. That so. And so the father had to salute his son. And the son has to now double take and salute his father. I mean, it's beautiful. And they both shed tears and hug themselves. Because the father knows that this boy is going to go places. I may not be able to make to be a general, but he can make to be a general. You hear what I'm saying? Is I'm telling you that there is a culture. If you are in church, you walk in when you like, you walk out when you want. If they tell you anything, if it suits you, you do it. You are not having the spirit of faith. You are not having that culture. The kingdom of God is not careless. It's not so that you can do what you like. That is not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is regimented. And this centurion proved it he said something close to that. He said, look, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. Okay? So I understand the culture that, look, we are talking about power here. These devils must leave my son, my servant, and if the devil must leave, power must be expressed. That also. So I understand how power works. And this principle is the same everywhere. Are you still with me? Those of you that are here with me. It's the same everywhere. All right, let me ask you a question. Uh, our lead worshiper today, you. No. Yes, stand up, sir. What car are you driving? A Corolla. When you are learning to drive, do you learn with a Corolla? You learn with a Corolla. 
You are not qualified for this. Sit down. Thank you very much. Sir, what car are you driving? Toyota. Toyota Prado, Toyota. Did you learn to drive with a Prado? But you learned to drive with a, maybe a Volkswagen Beetle, looking at him. <laughs> Amen. What I was trying to bring out there is that once you understand the principle, it does not matter what kind of vehicle is brought before you. Is that not so? Once you understand the principle, if you want to learn to drive today, maybe special wants to learn to drive. Can you drive? Okay. Let us own special want to learn to drive. Will special say, look, I want to buy a Mercedes Benz, so I must learn with a Mercedes Benz. Is that what she's going to say? I want to learn to drive a car. Once you get the principle, hallelujah, they can bring any car before you will drive it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, glory. Once you get the principle right, bring any car for me, I will take it. So, when I'm talking about the culture in the kingdom, you just get the principles right. When you get it right, you can handle any stuff. When you understand what it means to be submissive to God's power, anywhere you need power to be displayed, the power of God will work for you. That's what the centurion proved. He says, sir, I understand this is a power play. I know the principle. If it works in one place, it will work in another place. You can't come under my roof. Because even my soldiers can't come under my roof. I'm a centurion. But this is what you are going to do. Speak the word. Because whenever I spoke the word, my soldiers will obey. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, <laughs> hallelujah. You know, generals don't really shout. A moment. Ah, moment, moment. Everybody begins to move. Go and watch some war films. Praise God. All you need to just speak a word. Sometimes he will just whisper. Something will happen. Raise your hand to the Almighty God. When you whisper, things will happen. When you whisper a word, things will happen. You will no longer struggle with the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's see whether what he said was acceptable to God or not. I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. The next verse. We're in Matthew chapter 8. For I am a man, see, under authority. Have his soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Why? This is, this is huge. Next verse. When Jesus heard it. When the Bible says he marveled, it means it was marvelous in his ears. Ooh, I can imagine he said, Peter, did you just hear that? I can even tell you, Andrew, wow, this guy didn't attend my school, but the principles are the same. He said, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. And look at the caveat. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the kingdom of heaven. The next verse, the next verse, please. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto this Constantinum, Go your way, and as thou hast believed, it shall be done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. I'm not telling you a lie. My wife and I will carry an anointing that is heavy. I'll tell you the truth. But most times we, we always take them back home. Because a bit of it nobody took. You will know when it's taken. Jesus said, if you let me, somebody touched me. And Peter said, ah, but we have been here. We have been drunk. I know all of you are just here. It's religious gathering. But there's someone here that touched me. Then the woman came and said, yes, I'm the one. I said within my heart, if I may just but touch the hem of your garment, I will be whole. Faith is not a movement. It's supposed to be your culture. If you don't have faith in God, you will struggle long. You know what it means to struggle long? My father didn't go to school. That's why I'm like this. I will remain like this. You are welcome to struggling. I'm not there, shall I? I'm not there. I, I, I grew up in the village. Oh, that's why I cannot amount to much. Welcome to the club, but me, I'm not there. I've left since. But you are in the kingdom of God. You can say, like, God is my father. 
what is the way am I supposed to conduct myself? Jesus saw what he said. He said, I have not found such a faith, not out in Israel. Do you know why? He had been looking for that kind of faith. He never found one. So quickly, let me give you your four points and I'll go and sit down. It's going to be a short survey, like I told you. How do you get the culture into you? Listen to me. Romans chapter 1, I think verse 16 or verse 4, 6, I can't remember now. Listen to me. He said, the invisible things of him, what you cannot see of him, they are clearly seen by what do appear. The invisible things, what you cannot see of God, you can actually see by the things you can see. That is, when you see the way some natural things happen, it can give you an idea how spiritual things happen. Are you catching what I'm saying? So, when you come to the culture and the spirit of faith, how do we get a culture? Do you know that there was a time there was a culture of ribbed jeans in Nigeria? Remember? Ribbed jeans. The jeans would be torn. In fact, I'm sure they would go to a tailor and say, yeah, cut off this place. Cut off that place. And the more they cut off, that was I assume, I don't know. The more they cut off, the better you are. That was what the culture, that is, it was widely spread it was acceptable, they approve it, and then they say it is normal. Is that not so? Oh, you're not answering me. If I ask all of you to stand up this morning and I see them preaching, is that normal? Is that normal? Is this scriptural? Huh? Is it in the Bible? It's in the Bible. The Bible pattern is all of you will be standing. I will be sitting. Matthew 5, look at it. But we have accepted the fact now that some of you need to be made comfortable. The AC will be at a certain temperature. Everything will be okay. The seeds, we must part the seeds. We can't sit on bench again. It has become what? Acceptable. But it is not against the Bible. It's not a sin. So it's okay. But if I ask all of you to stand up now <coughs> and I sit down, three classes of people will show up. Those who really love their pastor, they say, well, pastor is tired. That's why he's punishing all of us today. That's the first set. Uh, whatever he asks us to do, we'll do. There's a second set. <laughs> when I leave here today, before they see my leg in this area. <laughs> the third group, they are just waiting for service to end, to begin to attack. What kind of church is that one? When they don't get it, culture. Though it's not unscriptural, are you with me? We have accepted it. Alright? Many of you, those of you who still take buses, when you go to the bus station, is it culturally right for you? Or is it the practice when you get to the bus stop to stand behind somebody who is standing? Or stand behind? You stand behind or stand beside? And you elbow him and look for how to <laughs> when the boys come, you elbow. I'm letting you see how culture evolves. It may not be right, it may not be good, but it is accepted as a way of operation. I remember when I was still taking buses, that's a long time ago, and I vowed, I hope I can just mention to the spirit of faith, there was a day I vowed that I would never take a bus in this Lagos, and I have never taken a bus since then. There was a day I said I would never. I came from Kano and they stole my things. And I told myself, I will never, I will charter a vehicle alone. It's a spirit. And if you don't get to that point, you will never come out. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? So when it comes to culture, you also have a room to play to decide. Remember those five platforms I taught you the other time? Your structure, I told you about your nature, remember? And the second was what? Your nurture. The third was what? Your, the culture in which you grew up. And the fourth was what? The infrastructure. It, it will determine the word, the structure of your life. So let us look at God's word and see how do I get that spirit of faith? What is the fast track? When you travel, there's fast track. You come out of the airport. What is the fast track to have this culture? Number one, let's go to the Bible meditation. 
Meditation is a deliberate thinking on the word. In fact, I will only give you meditation today and I will close. There's no point rushing it. The points behind meditation, that's it. Listen, meditation is a deliberate focus on the word of God. A deliberate taking of scriptures and thinking on it. Meditation helps you to superimpose the spiritual on the physical. The word of God upon the natural experiences. Meditation helps you to make sense of what you are going through. Meditation helps you. It's a deliberate taking of scriptures. Putting it in front of you. Reading it. Thinking about it. Everybody can think. It is a process. It is not a casual thing. Meditation helps you to grow in your faith. Romans 10, 17 says, Now then, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word. The word there is by continuous hearing. How do you continually hear? You do yourself a lot of disservice when you go to church and you sleep throughout. You may as well sleep at home. You do yourself a lot of disservice. These messages are on YouTube. And you don't go back to them. Psalm 62 verse 11 we read earlier. Once have God spoken, twice have I heard. How do I hear it the second time? Until you hear it again and again and again and again is of no benefit to you. Or oh, let me say it this way, it's of very little benefit. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. You will see it. How to develop this culture of faith is work, it's a deliberate work. You can amount to anything. You can become anything you desire. Or that you see in God's word, there is nothing that is too small. Somebody asked me, how old are you? I told them, oh, you are getting too old. I said, that's your opinion. I'm getting younger every day. That's your opinion. I believe everything God said about me will come to pass. You can't stop it. I can't stop it. My fault can't stop it. My errors can't fault it. Any of my weakness, God will strengthen me because God is committed to my future. He's committed to your future to say it's committed to your future. I say it's committed to your future. I'm only asking you to help yourself be in agreement with God's word to get there. This scripture, the context of it where Moses was dead, that's the earlier verses. The old order is gone. And he said, Moses is dead. Now get up, Joshua, and do this. And let's fast track. He said, this book of the law, the book of the law is the Pentateuch in the Old Testament, the old scriptures. The Penta, Penta, Penta is five, Pent, Pentecost of 50, Penta. Pentateuch is five, the five books of the Bible. That is what he was referring to. That's Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. They are the first five books. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They form the foundation of many things, foundation of doctrine. When Pastor was teaching us this morning, she was teaching out of Leviticus or, or Numbers, wherever those two scriptures, about offerings. Are you with me? Are you still where? So he said, Look, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You see that sign there, that English sign. What did, whenever you see that, what did they call it? Semicolon. What you are going to see after is an explanation. An insight into what was before. Anytime you see it in your Bible, what they are going to see later gives you an inside explanation of what was there. He said, But that shall what? Meditate there in day and night. So when he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, what is not giving explanation, the way to do it is to what? Meditate. Say, Meditate. To think on. Oh, say, To think on. To ponder. To mutter, to say to yourself, meditation, to think on, to ponder, to mutter, to speak to yourself. One more time, meditation is to think on, to mutter, to say to yourself, to repeat it to yourself. One more time.
whatever order you put it. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you hear a word, when you hear a message, when you read your Bible, you won't be running heart as scatter, believe me. I thank God for men of God that have platforms, global platforms, and I thank God for their lives. The only way it benefits you is the scripture. You take the word. You think on it. You murder. You speak to yourself. And I will give you an example. Psalm 23 verse 1. I will come back here. Psalm 23 verse 1. Can you give it to me? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm sure all of you read this every time. Squeeze the juice out of this scripture. When you meditate, you squeeze the juice. The Lord. Who is the Lord? Who is like the Lord? The creature of the heaven and the earth. You're thinking about it. Mm, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. So if I want to know this, Lord, let me look at the heavens. You can actually come out of your house and look. Is this scripture that is moving you? You're looking at it. You're thinking about it. How great thou art. You are mighty. You are glorious. You are thinking about the Lord. Is this scripture you are working on? That is called meditation. You are replacing some things in your mind. Are you catching what I'm saying? That Lord, before you get to it, is my shepherd. Who is a shepherd? He's not the bandits, not the fool and the herdsman. He's my shepherd. You might even go to the dictionary and say, what does shepherd mean? What are the attributes of a shepherd? Okay, the shepherd determines where the sheep goes. So I can't determine where I want to go now. It's the shepherd I have to determine. It's not how I feel. Uh, I have to do what the shepherd says. If you've ever seen animals, all those sheep going, you know there's a head sheep that's in front. All of them will be following it. So my shepherd has a right to appoint someone to be in front of me. I'll have to follow I will not say, ah, 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 you have to be in front of me. If you're not in front, I'm not following. Do think through it. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay, so he knows where the grass is green. Even if I don't think it is, he knows. You squeeze all those things. When you squeeze it, it is called meditation. Are you still with me this morning? It is called what? Meditation. Go back to that Joshua 1.8. It is called meditation. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Now, where do you see day and night mentioned again with scripture? Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit at the seat of discomfort. Those are the three states in which actions are expressed. The fundamental three states. When you are walking, when you are standing, when you are sitting. The three fundamental states. Are you kind of what I'm saying? Say, bless that man. Not that he's going to be blessed. He's already blessed. He doesn't need anybody to pray for him. He's already blessed. Blessed is that man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That is, he will do things godly. Nor stand in the way of sinners. He will not stand in their place and relate with them, nor sit at the seat of discomfort. All those who lie and tell stories, let me tell you something. If you want your faith to go far, if you see anyone who doesn't love God and respect God, keep your distance. I'm not saying don't relate with the person. When you live with the person, you know you are a missionary to the person. You are on a mission. Verse 2 of that sub chapter 1, but his delight... His delight is in the law of the Lord. He's excited. Many of you, you must, for you to meditate, you must be excited in the word of God. Hallelujah. Don't be excited by miracles. You are already a miracle. Don't be forwarding uh, uh, what God cannot do does not exist. We know it's true. Forward my messages, praise God. Forward mama's messages. And you think that by four all those one things are going to change. Let's watch. Let's, I'll give you one year. We'll, we'll check record whether things have changed. God's, the scriptures can't be broken. 
He said, they that be planted in the house of God shall flourish where? In the court of our God. As you go deeper into the court, that's where you are going to flourish. Are you with me this morning? He said, but the meditate, he said, but in me does he meditate day and night. And verse 1, chapter, chapter Psalm 1 said, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Bear his fruit in his season. His leaves does not wither. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. If he's sending pure water, he will prosper. If he's sending shoes, he will prosper. If he's sending okrika, he will prosper. He was spending brand new cars, he will prosper. He was selling jets, he will prosper. Whatsoever he do, it shall prosper. What will take you there? Meditation on the word of God. Don't look for who to give you money. Look for how to give money to people. Don't look up and say, ah, these people are very rich. Oh. Ah, hey. Look at her glasses. Jesus. Money they owe. <laughs> Premium or nothing. <laughs> Undisputed. <laughs> Unopposed. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't do that when you see people. Hey. Money or not. Is that what they say? No. Just relax. You just stay on the word. You just stay on the word. You just stay on the word. Joshua 1 8, go back there. You just stay on the word. Meditate in. It does not matter whatever you do. You are a student. You can, without doing 419 in Yahoo, you can build a house for your parents if God Almighty opens life for you. You, can, you don't have to sleep around. You don't have to do nonsense around. You have enough capacity in your spirit. God has given you enough capacity to be anything. When liars show up in front of you, you know he's a liar. She's a liar. He just, just He's not going to work. He said, then you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. You see, what is written in the Bible, you both see the hardware and the software. Are you with me? There is more to what is written. What you are saying is not enough. He said that you will observe to do according to all that is written. There is an all in every scripture that is written. But you can only see those things and do them when you meditate. What does that mean? When you mutter, when you speak to yourself, when you think about it. When, you, when in the early years of our marriage, our all, all our, you know, we live in a three bedroom flat in Kano. Every room had a cassette player. I'm sure many of you don't know what's called a cassette player. There's a device called cassette player. Every room has a cassette player, and my wife will put the word of God or worship in every room. If you enter a room, music and word is playing. If you, the speed is robust, let me tell you something. There's one guy. He, says he was a banker. He was an accountant. He was my wife's friend. He will come from his, after close from work. He's a Muslim. I just want to come to your house because I always felt peace. I always felt peace. I just want to be in your house. Say, so don't give me food. Don't give me drink. I don't want anything. Almost every day he will sit down and relax. It will be your testimony of your house in Jesus' name. The demons will not operate. See, if demons are harassing you every day, I suspect something. You're a wicked person. With all respect. Know what he said? He that repays evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. Those who have done you good, you do them bad. You will be doing vigil every day because demons will not go. When you send them, they will say on the window, say you will also invite us in. You tell the other demons, don't go, don't go, don't go far. <laughs> this man is wicked. <laughs> don't go far, don't go far. He will invite us. Then you will do the wicked thing. How was the wicked thing? Somebody will be nice to you. You do him bad. Still, come, come back inside. They were all rushing. You go back to a prayer. Hey, power must change hand. No. Hey, hey. The demons will go. They will tell you, don't go far. Stay by the junction. It's good. We're going back. It's our house. Raise your hand to the Lord because I will not do evil. I will not repay evil for good. Those who have been good to me, in my own way, I will recognize and respect them. My natural parents, my friends, my bosses, my subordinates, I will be good to those who have been good to me. Even those who are not good to me, I will be good to them. Hallelujah. He said, For then, for then, thou shalt make your way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, that's number one. Maybe I'll just give you two points and Maybe I'll just mention the four and I'll close. 
this meditation. It will help you. Number two, helps you to focus and quietens your mind and plants a seed of success. You will have people say, I want to clear my mind. Meditation helps you to quietens your mind. Sometimes your mind is too active. If I don't get this, how would I do that? How would I pay for this? How would I do that? Hey, the children's fees. Oh, the bills. Oh, the flight ticket. Lack of... Oh, you quieten your mind. You know, you take a stroll and quietens your mind. But how you do it is different from meditation of the unbelievers. It's not just your mind be blank. There's a scripture you are thinking on. Yoga and all of them, they are only to remove your mind to be blank. There is nothing called blank mind. Satan will rush in. Just get a scripture. Before you go on meditation, maybe you want to take a stroll, you want to... There's a scripture you are dealing with in your mind. Is what we've been thinking about. Don't just decide to buy a house because your friend bought a house. You may be forced to steal to buy a house. Don't try to get married by four because all those who are younger than you are married. You may marry a wrong person. What you are going to do is to take a scripture that promised you a future like that. And then when worries, worries are coming and you know that you are not meditating enough, take those promises of God and take a walk. Hallelujah. It quietens your mind. Genesis chapter 24. I'll give you a scripture to help you. Verse 62 to 63. Read everything at home. Genesis 24. Partly for marriage. Don't be upset that others are getting married. You are a little slow. You, a, a God is preparing a great guy for you, a great girl for you, and your business. And Isaac came, that's Isaac, waiting for a wife, from the way of the well, Laharoi, for he dwelt in the south country. Next verse. And Isaac went out to do what? To meditate in the field at the even time. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. When you go to meditate, when you get to a point where you lift up your eyes, you see the camels coming. Ah, la cabo sote. You will see the camels coming. Hallelujah. You will see the camels show up. Show up with your business. Show up with your husband. Show up with your wife. Show up with your children. But it comes in the place of focus on God. There will be distractions that will not allow you to focus. Meditation helps you to develop that spirit of faith. And he saw the camels coming, bringing his wife. Hallelujah. Whatever you are serving in the house of God, do it meditatively. You are thinking, God Almighty will spot you out. God Almighty will change your circumstances, but you must be focusing. So meditation helps to quieten your mind. It makes a seed of success to be planted in your soul. At that point in time, you know, the seed begin to get watered, get planted, get watered. You're thinking about it. Others call you a fool, but well, you may look like a fool to them, but from God's word, you're not a fool at all. See, look at me. Look at me. There are so many things I believe God for, but God has assured me, not only will I feel them, the ones I have not done, my children's children will do them. Their children, their grand, my great-grandchildren, and I believe God. I, you can hardly hear me speak and not say this word almost every day. God showed it to me. The scripture can't be broken. My spiritual children, many of you will rise up and do far beyond what I've ever done. It's meditation. Hallelujah. What is your mind? Praise God. Number three, helps you to hear the voice of God from the noise of the city. Helps you hear the voice. Whenever there is economic problems, blah, 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 all kind of voices are showing up. Meditation helps you to hear the voice of God. Isaiah 66, please. Verses 6 and 7, or just verse 6. Isaiah 66. Verses 5 and 6, rather. Isaiah 66. Help me, please. Technology, help me. My time is up, please. Read verse 5. Listen. Hear the words of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. So you are the Christians who go to church. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, that is, they don't want to be your friend, they don't want to play with you now because you are a child of God, okay, because you are always going for choir practice, you are always going for evangelism. They hate you. And that cast you out for my name's sake said, 
Let the Lord be glorified. So they're mocking you now. But he shall appear to your joy. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, you're not saying amen. He shall appear to your joy. Amen. And they shall be ashamed. Can I hear you say, Lord, amen? amen? How is that going to happen? Verse 6. A voice of noise from the city. A voice from the temple. There are two voices. Meditation helps you to hear the voice from the temple as opposed to the voice of noise from the city. The city has a voice. The street has a voice. The street has a culture. True or false? This is what we do in this area, or this is what we, nah, this is what we do in this area. They say they have a voice, but there's a voice from the temple. And what does it say? A voice of the Lord that rendered recompense to his enemies. Before she traveled, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered from a man child. That is, when you meditate and that voice from the temple begins to grow in your heart, before you travail, you will bring forth. Before you get into pain, this happens. Before it becomes too bad, God Almighty will intervene. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So meditation, you know, the word helps you to hear the voice. Hebrews 4.12, can you give it to me? Helps you to discern what it is that is just a fake and what is it that is pride? Doing the right thing is what guarantees result. Doing the right things God said is what guarantees result. And it's only from the temple you hear that. But if you are not meditating, you will not be able to know the difference. Are you with me? For the word of God is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing evil to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Meditation is what gets you to this place. Let me tell you something. God said in the book of, I think, Job, he said, a hypocrite at heart doeth not well, for he does not know at what he stumbles. God wants you to know where you stumble. How did I miss it? Not that you could justify yourself, but you can ask for grace not to do it again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Meditation helps you. Helps you. To know that this is soul, this is spirit. Thinking on the word. The word of God will show you how to dress. Many of you want breakthrough. You have only two shirts, but you never wash them. You never wash those two shirts. I have been there before. I had two shirts. And I was going to propose to a girl who is a lawyer. My shirt, I had to turn it. It had been, it had been torn. And I would go and meet her and say, hey, will you marry me? With my spiritual self, she would say no. There was a day I asked her, I said, honey, if I'm a carpenter, will you marry me? She said, if you're a carpenter, I won't marry you. I said, you're a carpenter. Improve yourself. It's not how expensive stuff are. Are you with me? Oh, say amen, somebody. Yeah. I don't know why I'm looking at these young people. This it's not about how expensive. Your future can be better. Your future will be better. You are not coming to church to look for a visa to go to the U.S. You will be, they will be begging you to come to the U.S. when the time comes. Oh, you didn't say loud amen. Yeah. They will be begging you to come. You will see four or five invitations. You say, I can't take all of you. That's what's going to happen. But start from where you are, begin to meditate on the scriptures. Even what I share today is enough. You can start from there. Let it affect how you think. Let it affect how you carry yourself. Let it affect it, and it can only affect it when you are thinking on it, when you are meditating on the word of God. The last point here, and we'll close. Number four, it helps you to make the right investment each time. Meditation helps you to make right investment, business investment. If you are not meditating, most likely you can be deceived. You've heard it said before that all that glitters is not gold. Some are fake. Meditation. They give you a business opportunity. Go, come, come and start going to Abuja. Come and start going to Sokoto. And it is not right. It may not look right. But in meditation, God will show that it may be slow, but it will, come out, it will come to pass. And some look very, very good. 
In meditation, God will say, <laughs> if you touch it, eh, you go walk back home. It's meditation. That's where God becomes intimate with you. I'm closing now. That's where God becomes intimate with you. You want to make investment for business, or maybe your office just paid you one million bonus, or two million, or twenty million, or hundred million. You are tempted to go and buy a car. You are behind that car in traffic since. In fact, you have used the old model with your eyes. The new model now you want to possess it. <laughs> the old model you use it complete. When it came out, you are there. <laughs> Anytime you sit in traffic, you look at it. So until it finishes, now the new one has come out and they have just paid you money. You are eager to go and pay. Pastor and I, we made some money some years ago, long time ago. The money was plenty. I told my wife, honey, brand new Mercedes G Wagon. That's what I'm going to buy. G Wagon. She told me, I won't enter that car. If you buy it, you're on your own. And what's the car without your wife? Meditation. You sit down on the world. And the investment we made that time, we are still enjoying it today. That time, who will use the money for? If you are not meditating, you will lose your foundation. You will lose your footing. You will be wrong. Isaiah 28, verse 16, and we'll close. Isaiah 28, verse 16. Anytime you are going to business, into other stuff, you need it. If you don't have it, you will be deceived. You will lose money. And it's difficult to lose money as a businessman. It's painful. Because you're not earning salary. If the money goes, <laughs> you have to generate around that from somewhere else. So you can do it right. Each time you can hit it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, see, I lay in Zion. This is the culture of Zion. Are you with me? Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. This is the culture in Zion. This is what I expect them. This is the spirit of faith. When you want to do anything, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. A stone. It must be a stone. It may be something solid. A stone, a tried stone. A precious corner stone. A sure, that's what makes a sure foundation. In your marriage relationship, a stone. A tried stone. A precious corner stone. A pillar. It's no fluke. And how do you know it is a sure foundation? He that Believers shall not make it. How do you know? That is it. He that believes. Somebody is pushing you. Go and tell that girl you like her. Go and tell her you like her. You have not meditated. You are going to have nail on your forehead. There will be a lot of bloodshed, whipping and grinding of teeth. Not because, <laughs> not because she's not the right person, but you are not patient. You must meditate. You must get to that point where you receive the girl as your wife. Yes, sir. Yes. Not I like the way you sing. Uh huh. I like the way you walk. Uh huh. I like the no that one. He will nail you on the forehead. Yes, your brain will scatter. But when you, when you stay on the word, he that believeth does not make haste. You sit down with scriptures. You think about it. Okay, now I'm of age. Now I'm working. My business is prospering. God, I ask you, I need to start a new level of business. I need a husband. I need a wife. I receive because your words say nothing good will you withhold from them that loves you. Oh, Lord God, nothing good will you withhold from them that fear you. Your words say that I see a man who fears the Lord and delight greatly. In, that's a 112. This is what's going to happen. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Uh, and you begin to sit on scripture. You begin to sit on scripture. Oh, oh, you are not going to rush and say, any girl that comes to the church, you are going to pursue. That is the flesh. But through meditation, the same thing applies to our sisters. You are not under pressure. All my friends are married, I must get married. And you are desperate. No, you are more than that. Before you were ever born, you sorted that out. But in meditation, the Bible says nothing good will God withhold from them that loves him. Okay, how do I show my love for God? All I do, I come to church, I sit down and cross legs and watch. That doesn't show a love for God. What shows a love for God? I can do something. I can be a greeter. I can do evangelism. I can sing. I can encourage someone. 
you are looking at scriptures. Are you with me? And as you're looking at scriptures and respond to scripture, pew, pew, all those things begin to come to pass in your life because the Bible said that Joshua 1 8, then shall you make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. You are the one that will make your way prosperous. The village witches cannot stop you. Oh, I said your village witches can't stop you. They are not a factor in the equation. And the city witches, because witches are in Lagos too, the city witches will not stop you. They are not a factor in the equation. All you need to do is to allow your heart to be transformed by the word of God. You meditate in the word of God. What happened? Your culture, your, lo- your tongue, your language, everything begins to change. You understand that you belong to a kingdom and the almighty God will answer for you. Hallelujah. I hope you got something this morning. You received something this morning. Let's stand up on our feet this morning. Hallelujah. Let's stand up on our feet. Meditate in the word of God. That's the only thing I could give you out of the five points. We will continue this year because we must build our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It must build your faith. Begin to take faith projects in your heart and say, Lord, help me. Help me. Help this church. I want to pay for this land. I want to pay for it. 200 million is nothing. Nothing's chicken change. I want to pay for it. It is the way you think that determine what you get. Don't ever look at what you get. Look at what you give. And you give first in your heart, in your mind. And how do you get there? Meditating in the word of God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When we were in church in Kano, our church was not up to 18. And I was one of the most senior in the church. I graduated about two years earlier. We bought the church premises. Faith. We're not looking at what you collect. And I've been blessed. My children have never slept in the hospital once since they were born. Once they take them from the hospital, that's it. So people spend millions for hospital bills. I know the same blessings upon my grandchildren when they begin to show up. Are you hear what I'm saying? Because God's work cannot be broken. We look at faith projects. Forget about cars. Cars are going to run after you. Amen, somebody. Oh, say amen, somebody. Don't be looking at building houses. You must invest. But you look at the kingdom of God. Look at what God has said concerning you. You will see, say, the goodness and message shall follow you all the days of your life. That scripture cannot be broken. Raise your hand and receive it. Goodness and mercy. It's not just for confession after church service. That is your testimony. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Oh, what is good? Oh, that is merciful. I receive. When my errors, my faults, oh, my sin, I place under the blood of Jesus. Goodness and mercy follow me. Open your mouth and begin to talk. Talk to yourself. It's part of meditation. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Oh, I'm blessed. My children are blessed. My wife is blessed. My husband is blessed. Our home is blessed. My life is blessed. Oh, I will never fall. And when I fall, I will rise. In the name of Jesus Christ, if I fall, I will rise. Not when I fall. If I fall, I will rise. But I will never fall. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is open your mouth and declare how to, it will not depart out of your mouth. Through meditation, I am not late. All things are working together for my good. All things are working together. Everything that has been slow, that has been delayed in my life, I thank God they are working together for my good. Why? Because I know now, I know, I know, I know. Romans 8 28, he said, We know. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It is well with me. I know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No sickness in my body. In the name of the Lord. I don't have gynecological issues. I don't have medical issues. I don't have blood issues. I want to begin to say to yourself, uh, what afflicted my parents can't afflict me. I will do better than them. I do better than my parents. Open your mind. That's part of meditation. You are repeating over yourself. Uh, oh, the culture. The culture of faith uh, is victory. I have the victory. I have the victory. I have the victory. Oh, Rasataya, as it is raining outside, the blessing is raining over my life. It's poured over my life, uh, over my home. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you, precious Father. Oh, we give you thanks. Uh, oh, Lord, we give you praise. Uh, we give you holy. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we by the time God is done with you, that will be your song. Has come to pass. Oh, see what.
Alléluia. Alléluia.